my dear sisters and brothers in the gospel today jesus is speaking to us about the restructuring of our life that jesus wants of us all of us need a restructuring in our life we cannot continue to live as we were living to this day if we continue to live the way we were living to this day we would continue to be burdened we would continue to be anxious we would be continue to be worried we would continue to be judgmental all these negative emotions and attitudes will continue to haunt us and to destroy us what's needed is a restructuring of our way of living hallelujah shall all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah 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 jesus gave us this lesson in bethany in bethany in the house of lazarus you know whenever jesus was teaching in the temple of jerusalem for night rest he retired to this little village very close to jerusalem city and there jesus had a friend lazarus lazarus whom jesus raised from the dead and lazarus had two sisters jesus and his disciples were at home martha was busy like any housewife there are housewives in here when there are eminent guests at home what do you do you run about you run about doing all sorts of serving giving tea preparing uh, for supper cleaning the plates washing the plates there's much to do and martha had much to do and mary was sitting at the feet of jesus listening to him and martha thought this girl mary was wasting the time doing nothing at one moment martha couldn't take it any more martha went and complained to jesus master look at that girl sitting there doing nothing she's always like that master you tell her to get up and come to something useful that's when jesus said to martha martha you are burdened you are anxious you are troubled about many things indeed only one thing is necessary and mary has chosen the better part hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers so was martha doing something unnecessary was martha doing something useless or oh, no martha was a responsible housewife she had to be busy doing all those things and yet while doing the right things while being busy in the necessary things martha was affected by unnecessary emotions useless negative wrong bad emotions and attitudes as the bible tells us martha was troubled martha was burdened martha was anxious martha was worried martha was troubled soon martha would be tired soon martha would be tired what is it that tires us does hard work tire anyone no hard physical labor does not tire anyone it is the mental stress mental stress that tires us the negative emotions bundled up in our hearts it is that bundle that tires us jesus was telling martha martha please come and sit here for a moment let me talk to you listen to me let me talk to you listen to me the one thing in life the most beautiful thing in life the necessary thing in life is to sit at the feet of jesus and listen to his voice hallelujah hallelujah shall all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah 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 that is the lesson that we learned today how to reorder restructure 
a way of living. We are responsible people, aren't we? Yes, we are fathers, mothers, we are husbands, wives, we are students, and we are engineers, we are doctors, we are politicians, we are media people. We have much to do. We should be doing all that. We cannot be lazy and lethargic at the same time while doing everything, while being busy with all the necessary things of life, we should not forget the most necessary thing. The one thing we must be doing to be with Jesus, to listen to the words of Jesus and to feel the presence of the Lord, to be strengthened with the power of the Holy Spirit sitting in the presence of the Lord the most necessary thing in life and elsewhere Jesus said you abide in me I will abide in you you keep close to me I will keep close to you a promise of Jesus I will keep close to you you keep close to me I will keep close to you you abide in me I will abide in you you be there for me I will be there for you an invitation and a promise the invitation is to remain close to Jesus, to wait to listen to the voice of Jesus. You know, why is it that we are not able to listen to the voice of Jesus? Voice of God, why is it that we are not able to listen to the voice of God? You know, there's a beautiful passage in the book of Samuel. First Samuel, first Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 onwards. Samuel the boy, later the prophet, the boy was sleeping in the temple on the one side. On the other side of the temple, the elderly priest was sleeping, Eli, elderly priest. And Samuel heard a voice calling him Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up, heard the voice, did not see anyone. So Samuel thought it was Eli who was calling him. Samuel the boy got up and went to Eli, Sir, here am I, did you call me? And the Eli, the elderly priest said, Oh, my boy, I did not call you. You must be dreaming. Go and sleep. Samuel went and lay down to sleep. And Samuel slept. God called again. A third time. Now, third time, the priest Eli thought, Ah, it must be God calling the boy. Must be God calling the boy. And Eli said to Samuel, My boy, if you hear the call again, respond, Here am I. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Now, this time, Samuel went and lay down, not to sleep, but to listen. But to listen, that's when Samuel heard God calling. And Samuel responded, Here am I. Speak to me, Lord. And God spoke. Samuel heard Samuel, the boy, really heard God speaking. God telling him what to do, where to go. What is the meaning of his life? A great prophet, a great prophet was born in the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, there is a special explanation, a very special explanation. Why was it? Why was it? that Samuel was not able to hear the voice of God. Why was it that Samuel was not able to hear the voice of God? The word of God says, Samuel was not familiar with the voice of God. Samuel was not used to the wavelength of the voice of God. Samuel was used to the voice of priest Eli, the voice of his parents, but not, not to the voice of God. But when Samuel was prepared and waiting to listen to God speaking, that's when, that's when Samuel was able to listen to God's voice and Samuel was able to tell the people what is God's will for the people of Israel. My dear sisters and brothers, a big challenge to all of us. At every moment, we must be listening to what God is saying. There's a decision to make. We need to wait and pray. What Jesus said, wait and pray. Wait and pray. Well, that is the way we must be living. 
before every decision whenever we are tense whenever we meet with an accident whenever we fail in any attempt whenever someone betrays us whenever something goes wrong with us whenever there is a success we must be waiting in prayer to listen to what god has to say why are we troubled why are we upset why are we angry why are we why are we all the time running around wanting to take revenge because we are not able we are not able to listen to god's voice we are not familiar with the voice of god today the lord is saying you keep close to me i will keep close to you and i will speak to your heart through prophet isaiah through prophet isaiah god said a promise when you turn when you turn to the left and to the right you will hear a voice speaking to you this is the way go this way hallelujah 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 we must make a decision today before we make any new step in life every time anything goes right or wrong we must make our life a continuous obedience to god's word i must not do anything because i want to do it i must not go anywhere because i want to go i must be going anywhere because god wants me to go i must be doing anything because god wants me to do that how do i know this i must wait in prayer i must wait in prayer to hear what god has to tell me to hear what god has to tell me waiting in prayer wait and pray you know we are living in a very different sort of culture aren't we a culture that stifles us uh, we are not ready we are not patient to wait to wait and pray we are living in an instant culture we want everything instantly instant tea instant coffee instant online shopping instant marriage instant divorce i want everything when i want it where i want it with whomsoever i want it i want it my way it's ego that prevails and that's why we fight often i have my ego he has his ego she has her ego when two egos get inflated there will be fight conflict in the families in the institutions in our associations wherever we come together it's ego that prevails no it's the word of god will of god that must prevail mother mary said here am i your handmaid let it be done to me according to your word to be able to become servants and handmaids of god a servant is always ready to wait to listen to what the master says i have to make a decision let me check what god has to tell me i failed let me check what god has to tell me in this moment of failure i have i have met with an accident i'm sick my children are going wrong my parents are upset with me let me check what god has to tell me i must always i must always be ready to listen to god's voice my dear sisters and brothers we are wasting our life running around running around and all sorts of unholy all sorts of unnecessary all sorts of stifling emotions and attitudes are hurting us all the time we need to change we need to change we need a restructuring of our life hallelujah 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 thank you jesus praise you jesus my dear sisters and brothers let us listen to god's voice let's go god's way and jesus is the way and only he knows what is right and what is wrong and we must be abiding in jesus and what happens when we abide in jesus what happens when jesus abides in me jesus explains this to us jesus said i'm the vine you are the branches i'm sure you have gone to vineyards there is 
a main stem of the vine sprouting up and spreading all over the place there are many branches coming out the branches spread far and wide but however far however wide the branches spread you must know the branches are connected the branches are connected to the main stem and there is a special a uh, vital system in the vine in every tree for that matter a vital system you know what whatever happens to the branches immediately it is related to the main stem say for example a branch is cut a branch is cut immediately it is related to the main stem and from the main stem there is a flow of life sap to that part of the branch which is cut that cut is healed and the branch thrives and the vine bears fruit that's what jesus said you abide in me i will abide in you and then the holy spirit will flow into you the vital connection established by the holy spirit when the holy spirit flows into us what happens jesus said he will bear fruits what are the fruits that jesus speaks about what are the fruits that jesus speaks about the fruits of the where do we find that in the bible galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 what are the fruits of the holy spirit first one love does st paul speak about fruits does st paul speaks about fruits of the holy spirit no st paul speaks about the fruit of the holy spirit in the singular in the singular the fruit of the holy spirit check your bible the fruit of the holy spirit but strange st paul speaks about the fruit of the holy spirit and then he goes on narrating how many fruits nine fruits you know why in first corinthians chapter 13 first corinthians chapter 13 st paul speaks of love love is the supreme love remains love does not fail love is the one thing in life and you must always search to love now all the other fruits 12 fruits are the other uh, consequences of love now when i say fruit when st paul says fruit of the holy spirit what does it mean you know how do you know whether a tree is a mango tree or apple tree from the fruits if the tree bears mangoes it's a mango tree if the if the tree bears apple it's an apple tree and therefore when you speak of fruits you're speaking of the nature of the tree that means when the holy spirit comes to us when the holy spirit is present and active in us all these manifestations will be there love peace joy patience kindness goodness self control faithfulness and gentleness the fruits of the holy spirit what makes our life beautiful what makes our life beautiful just imagine in a family everybody loves everybody else just imagine in a family everybody is gentle with everybody else no one shouts at anyone just imagine in a family there's peace and celebration all the time that's what jesus wants and that's what the holy spirit the holy spirit does to us the fruits of the holy spirit we will bear fruit but then in order that we may bear fruit the one thing we must be doing is to abide in jesus abide in jesus to keep close to jesus in prayer how do we keep close to jesus in prayer whatever happens to us we turn to jesus whatever happens to us i i fail in a project of course i'm sad when i fail in a project but immediately i turn to jesus i turn to jesus i tell him lord i failed tell me why i failed tell me what am i to do tell me how should i take it i i offer that failure to jesus and from jesus there will be the flow of life sap into us the consolation the comfort of the holy spirit there are moments we are we are hurt 
all of us are hurt. Is there anyone here who is not hurt yet? All of us are hurt. If you decide to love, be ready to be hurt. We are born to be hurt. But what do we do when we are hurt? When we are hurt, we keep that hurt feeling. When we keep that hurt feeling, that hurt feeling will ferment. Ferment and become anger and hatred and revenge. Our relationship is broken, is cut off. No. The moment I'm hurt, there's pain, of course. There's a pain. But then there's a second movement of the heart. There is immediately a feeling rising up in our heart. But there's a second moment. Second moment, I turn to Jesus in prayer. I tell Jesus, Lord, I'm hurt. Because he did this to me. She said of this to me, I'm hurt. And turn to Jesus, speak to Jesus, listen to Jesus. That's when the Holy Spirit of love flows into me. When love flows into hurt, what happens? The hurt vanishes. The hurt vanishes. You feel angry. You feel revengeful. It is that feeling of anger. It is that feeling of revenge. When the Holy Spirit flows, that anger vanishes. The feeling of revenge vanishes. There is love in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all raise the hands and say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, that's how we make our life beautiful. Say you are tempted. All of us are tempted. <coughs> it's a very sinful world we are living in. Always there are, there are pleasures of sin that hold attraction to us. All of us are tempted. But what do we do when we are tempted? Immediately we turn to Jesus. That's what Jesus did. Jesus turned to the Father when he was tempted. From, from Jesus, there flows the power. The power of the self-control of the Holy Spirit. Self-control is, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'm not afraid of temptation. I'm not upset with temptation. I turn to Jesus. From Jesus, the power of self-control flows into me. In that power, I'm able to say, get behind me, Satan. There are moments we become sad. Well, things are going wrong all the time. Things are going wrong all the time. We become sad. We are disturbed. At every moment of disturbance, we turn to Jesus. We make it a moment of prayer. From Jesus, peace flows into me. Joy flows into me. All these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We will bear fruit. My dear sisters and brothers, as we are in the presence of God today, we decide on this. We will wait and pray. On the spur of a moment, we should not be reacting. Of course, feelings come up. We feel sad. We feel angry. We feel disturbed. But there should always be a second movement of the heart, turning to God in prayer. The feelings are offered. The emotions are given to God. And the Holy Spirit flows. To change us, to change us and make everything beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 You know, uh, we had a problem here some years ago. The problem here. You know, we need a lot of milk um, for the children, uh, for the tea. We need a lot of milk. Earlier, we were depending on the government milk department. But in this state, you know, in this state, there is always a strike going on. Yesterday was a strike. A strike. Nothing moved. And when there is a strike, everybody sleeps at home. And the department of milk is also on a strike. And there's no milk. I had to tell people, my friends, please, today our children will starve, no milk. And uh, tea will be black, no milk. And we were embarrassed saying it all the time to the people. And we prayed. And God gave us a message. And the message was to begin a dairy farm. 
So we bought cows. We bought cows. And from then on, we never had a problem with milk. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there's a good thing about cows. They never go on a strike. <laughs> they are very much, they're very much uh, 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 members of the kingdom of God. They know a retreat is going on. They can't afford, they can't afford to go on a strike. <clears throat> but then, you know, when cows came, another problem. Cows give not only milk, but also cow dung. <laughs> dirt, dirt, stench. And that's a big problem. And the neighbors began to complain. Pollution, everywhere people speak out pollution, smell all the time. Well, another problem, we prayed over that. And God gave us a message. You know what we did? We brought all that cow dung and put it all for the trees here. Uh, well, the boundary is a river, a big river in the state, a river that has water all the time. And um, because of the water, plenty of water, there are trees. We love trees. But the one type of tree we love is mango tree because we love mangoes. We brought all that cow dung and put it all for the trees, mango trees. In one year time, in one year time, the, the roots of the mango trees were very active. They absorbed all that dirt of cow dung. And the roots sent up all that cow dung through the main stem to the branches. In one year time, all that cow dung was hanging on the branches of the tree as mango fruits. You know, you know what a mango fruit is? Did you ever think of it? A mango fruit? A mango fruit is the round shape and yellow color and sweet taste that cow dung received on the mango tree. Don't think of it when you eat mangoes. But that is it. You ask any botanist, they will tell you that the transformation, the life transformation that takes place in the main stem of the tree and we have plenty of mangoes, but nobody's allowed to throw stones at the mangoes. You can climb up and pluck. If you throw stone on the trees, that stone will surely come and fall on the asbestos here, roof somewhere. Well, that's what mango trees are. Mango trees are, the, the cow dung is dirty. The cow dung is smelling. But the smell of the mangoes is different. All that stench, all that stench of the cow dung became a sweet fragrance on the mango fruits. A transformation, a life transformation. That's exactly what must happen in our lives. Always people throw dirt into our life. People shout at me. People shout at me. People find fault with me. People gossip about me. People go and spread rumors about me. Cow dung, cow dung, dirt thrown into my life. What do I do? What do I do? I become burdened. I become anxious. I become troubled. I become upset. No. No. As soon as, as soon as, a negative emotion wells up in my mind, immediately I must turn to my main stem. What's my main stem? What's the main stem? Jesus, Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. I turn to Jesus in prayer. From Jesus, there's a flow of the life sap, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will bring in the fruit of love, of peace, whatever disturbs us. The moment we offer that disturbance to God, there is peace flowing into me. Whatever makes us sad, the moment we turn to God, all that sadness turns to joy. Whatever, whatever temptations come our way, the moment we offer the temptation to Jesus, we get the power to say no to a temptation, even a sin that we commit. The problem is not that we commit a sin. The problem is, we don't know what to do with our sin. 
The only person, the only love that's able to do something with our sin is Jesus. I need to turn to Jesus and tell him, Lord, I, I offer this sin to you. But, but normally what we do, we justify the sin. We justify the sin. Haven't you heard someone saying, ah, everybody takes truck. What's the big thing? Everybody takes truck. Any strong boy and girl, 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 takes trucks. And if you justify sin, if you justify sin, that sin will come back to you as a temptation next time. And when a temptation comes to you over a justified sin, you will not be able to say no to it again. And you fall back into it. And in no time, you are a drug addict. In no time, a hot temper. No time, depressed. What we need to do is to turn to Jesus. Make it a moment of prayer. And thus, you will see how our life becomes bearing fruit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.